The whole idea is that the partition of Africa, which happened in whatever year, has to be overcome by businesses. I guess the politicians have realized it's going to be difficult for them. So let us start trading among ourselves and remove all the trade barriers, etc. How many businesses in this room have heard of the CFTA? Again, I want a show of hands. Good. It's a serious business and don't care with it. And only four countries are prepared. South Africa, Kenya, Egypt, and to some extent, Nigeria. It, if it opens the borders, those who manufacture goods, and you have a competitive good, El door, you are gonna. So the ability to anticipate the CFTA, if you don't anticipate it, is going to affect your business. Now, I deliberately put the two maps on, our, on the board. The map on the right is the map of Africa in China. If you've gone to China, count the number of times you will see Africa map and see the countries. I have been looking for this for three years. You will hardly go to any Chinese office at all and see Africa map which shows the countries. It shows Africa as one. And it is always China in it. That is what is called soft power. Again, during break, if you want to talk to me, I will tell you what this means and why you have Galate here. It's just a system of a massive strategy implemented by countries, and we have no response whatsoever. In fact, our parliament has no soft committee. By the way, this may surprise you. Are you aware our parliament has no committee that looks at the economy? Yes, I've said this before, and I want to be challenged. Because there are two types of committees in parliament. There is a select committee, and there is a standing committee. The standing committee is the committee which is created as a result of something which is permanent. Let me make it simple. The select committee is the committee which mimics the government departments. But because you have a minister of finance and not a minister of economy, you don't have a mimicking parliamentary committee. It's as simple as that. Because the National Development Planning Commission, which is supposed under the Constitution to charge the responsibility of the economy, has no equivalent committee in parliament. I, I stand to be corrected. If I'm wrong, too bad. Everybody makes mistakes. But there is no committee that looks at the economy. We look at finance. What does it mean? It means that when major things are happening in the economy, we are not having a focus on it. We are having a focus on approving deals, rejecting deals, criticizing things without looking at the multiplier effect it has on the economy. When the UK decided to deal with the pharmaceutical sector involving AstraZeneca, the committee had 254 public sittings and drilled it down so they could advise the government. The parliament is a representative of the people. Have you spoken to your parliamentary member who is on the committee on economy before? If you know, show him. I would like to meet him. The slide is not moving. Maybe you can do it from there. Now, because of China's intention to control continental free trade, this is what they've done in Kenya. If you can play it. Picture this. Life is a series of stops. A series of frequent, scheduled, or at times unscheduled stops. A series of stops from where we pick up and continue with our journeys. The standard gauge railway, which covers the Mombasa-Nairobi route in 472 kilometers, will have many stops or stations. Let's move on. So, China put 3.8 billion in Kenya, connecting the railway from port of Mombasa through Kenya to, and uh, Uganda is going to connect Tanzania. Who is going, whose goods is going to be traded on these routes? It's obvious. And the Silk Road is already hitting the Middle East. The first train has already reached London, if you haven't seen it, it's in real time. In five years, Africa, will be receiving Chinese goods by train. That's a fact. And it will affect your business. It may be good, it may be bad. A business leader ought to anticipate it and strategize for it. That's my point. So it may be an opportunity, sorry, or it may be a threat. The key thing to remember is irrespective of the business you are in, there's always competition ahead and speed matters. 
in competitiveness speed is very, very key. You have to be asking yourself if you are in this room, what will happen to your business by 2030? Let me start from the bottom left. Kodak, those of us who, are, who were old then, we never miss this. You couldn't take a picture without this. Is it there? And apparently I hear they invented the, uh, the or, or original idea about making the film. I don't know if that is true. And they were slow in coming out. But by the way, it's vanished. Nobody buys films anymore. I think if you talk to your kids, those, of, I mean, those who have young kids, they may not even understand what you're talking about. What is Kodak? Certain important people by 2030 will not be important anymore. When I was young, a postmaster was a big thing. I, I believe Prof must have had a postmaster in Fremwasi. And if a postmaster is coming to town, the postmaster, the priest, and the head teacher were the big people. Do you know any postmaster? <laughs> Professions vanish. Next to him is a typist. People went to school to study typing. The other day, I was passing on the, on the road in front of Aquinas, and I saw the civil service has, still has some training school there where I'm sure people learn typing. I don't know, unless that's where they used to learn the typing for the public service. Who learns typing anymore? Even the type tutor that used to be put on the computer, these days you don't find it anymore. Everybody types. So the industry of typing has moved from typing to what we call executive assistance. You have to glorify the name and make it nice. If you don't understand how to move and transform from a typist to executive assistant, or if you are too pompous, you think you are good to remain a postmaster, one day you wake up and you don't need postmasters anymore. Now, here is one profession that by 2030 may not exist. Taxi drivers. They may not exist. And I'm not kidding. Taxi is the only word, which is the commonest word in the whole world. Every country calls it taxi. You don't need to translate it. But this business may be gone. Why? Isn't Uber around already? Ask your kids how many of them still join taxis. In fact, your three-year-old child, by 2030, will not understand anything called taxi. When I was young, I lived in Konongo. First, the taxis don't do what we call the roaming and you stop them. You are sent from home to walk to the taxi station and bring the taxi home. That, yeah, that's what I used to do, and I can see Kwame. That, that's what we used to do. Now the taxis ring, go room. Now taxi drivers have phones, and they are comfortable. Air conditioning, but they are going to go. Because Uber is so aggressive that so, somebody at DVLA should be thinking, are Uber commercial cars are private cars? Are their number plates yellow or white? That's something we've not thought about, because our laws have not even reacted to it. But let me move on with the business sector and leave the public sector alone for now. Why it will go is that the agent or the manufacturers and owners of Uber and Google are experimenting with the driverless cars. If you do not know, in August last year, Singapore launched the driverless taxis. I'm not kidding, it's real. You can stop a taxi in Singapore today in some areas, sit in it, no human being, and the GPS takes you to your destination. By 2030, it will be here. Now, I can tell you in Accra alone, there are about 200,000 taxi drivers. Somebody who is planning the natural development agenda for 2063 ought to be thinking, what are we going to do with this huge labor force in our country where already employment data is something that we don't have? But let me deal with businesses. You need to be thinking whether your business will be around by 2030, and if not, how you are going to react. All right. Two things are important, only, in everything I've said. One is your attitude and strategy. That's one. You can choose to be an ostrich, to say nothing is happening. You can choose to be ignorant and not monitor what is going on. You can choose to know everything and do nothing and remain in matters arising. I've borrowed from my prof today. So your attitude and strategy is very important, and you can see the people there, each of them have a different attitude. There are some organizations which have transitioned from what they, do, they used to do when they realized it was dying to a new era. The second most important thing, apart from attitude and strategy, is the brand you have built. 
or the brand you will build. Brand is more important than any other thing. If you cannot build a brand between now and 2030, you are threatened. So let's deal with brand. Businesses in Ghana are affected by two types of brands. Their own individual brands which you can build, and the nation's brand. I have seen an organization which went for credit rating, got a triple A rating, yet was asked to take what is called a sovereign rating. In other words, even if you are well managed, because your country is having challenges with finances, you cannot borrow at the rate that a triple A rated company in another country can borrow. So it's not only your brand which matters, the national brand matters. As a result, businesses should be making contributions as to how we are branded. And businesses should be making demands as to the things that will benefit them. And then I go back to this on the demand for Minister of Public uh, uh, of, of, uh, of, of Business. I did not just talk about it. I went on every radio, I went on TV, and we did this with AGI. And it, finally, it happened. I don't need the credit, it's not important. Yesterday I met the minister and we were chatting about this. The point I want to make here is that the ministers and the governments are waiting for suggestions and ideas. They are. And I'm not talking about MPP or NDC. Every government welcomes ideas from businesses. So instead of waiting for government and always accusing government, Come collectively and create the type of ideas that you can suggest to the government that if you did this, businesses will grow. After all, what is growth of economy? In fact, growth of economy is nothing more than the collective productivity of our companies when coming together grows the GDP. That's what it is. So if our individual businesses are not growing, the economy is not growing. The economy is not more complex than that. All right. How are we branded as a nation now? That's my last. Many people, if I ask in this room, will give me different answers. But I did hear the senior minister yesterday being asked a question by the moderator. And if I knew, I would have prompted the moderator not to ask that question. The question was whether or not Ghana continue, can continue to be the gateway to West Africa. Why do we want to be the gateway? I have always challenged people about that thought. I've said it publicly. In fact, on the day I made this recommendation for Minister for Business, I made another recommendation that Ghana is not the gateway. And I actually said I was waiting for the day the gateway to Africa sign at the Kotoka International Airport was going to be yanked off. It's no more there anyway. I hope it never returns. Who, who pays attention to a gateway? Conceptually, a gate is where you pass through. Nobody goes to the gate. And how does this gateway benefit us? Ghana is actually right at the center of the world. That's a fact. You can choose to deny it. You can choose to accept it. It's entirely up to you. And I can tell you a couple of things you can do with it. If you want more, talk to me later. The Greenwich Meridian goes through Ghana. It is the last place it enters before it hits Antarctica. After the zero degrees goes through here, it enters nowhere before it hits Antarctica. So it is the last inhabited land dividing the West and East. It is the only place you can dock a ship and can be in the Western and the Eastern Hemisphere at the same time. And merchant navy people, as I speak to you, come offshore and perform ceremonies using our Greenwich Meridian. And we know nothing about it. Tap Air, a Portuguese airline, flies to Ghana almost daily. Why? Because they are destined to Cape Verde. Why? Because Cape Verde did a small one mile squared and painted this as where the equator is. And we Ghanaians go there and go and watch the equator. When we are at the center of the earth. That's what the Bible calls giving your birth right away. <laughs> and I'm showing you the map. And I want people to challenge it. Google center of the earth, the nearest nation. This is not in dispute. In fact, time is determined by where we are. Yet we are the most, um, I don't want to say unprompt. Um, the, the, yes, we, we, our mindset is so wrong. We do not even you know. We call GMT Greenwich Meridian, right? It should be meaning Ghana Meridian, probably. As, and this is not new. I'm not creating anything. And in Grumman's days, that's why the Meridian Hotel was located there. 
I have done this. I have checked. The location of Meridian Hotel is actually a few degrees off the zero point. The zero point is still there. And there's a significant thing the government needs to do if we want to take advantage of this, but that's not for this crowd. In the Nkrumah days, we had something called the zero room in the Meridian Hotel, and people paid. I wasn't old enough, but I have researched on this extensively. People paid to stay in that room just to be on the zero degree point. And I'm not talking about dividing east and west. I'm talking about dividing north and south. Because the equator is just five degrees south of Ghana. The equator is exactly on the 667 point south of Ghana. There are countries like Gabon who, tries to, who try to claim center. But it doesn't work. They are south of the equator, and they are 1,073 kilometers west of the Greenwich Meridian. There's no other country there. If you choose to believe it as a private sector person, you can, for example, brand your product as made at the center of the earth. And that is what individual branding does. But if the government decides to do this branding and stop the gateway, which government after government for the past 30 years have been using, it will brand the nation and it will affect your brand. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Ofosudote, and he's made in the middle of the earth. What? Had this been 2016, I would say Mr. David Ofosudote twasso. <laughs> no, but for, for once in my life, I'm, I'm short of words. Amazing, amazing, amazing. It said that for the lack of knowledge, my people perish. I'm thankful that it wasn't written in this day because a Ghanaian prophet would have said, for lack of knowledge, there's doom so. But ladies and gentlemen, what is the best way to create the future? Is to know exactly what is happening now and to be able to predict. So the best way to predict the future is to create it now. For the next few minutes, may I show to you a group of young men and women who are creating the future through this video. Enjoy. Thank you very much. It's always difficult to come up and speak after two such illustrious gentlemen um, have taken the stage, so we'll try to do our best. My name is Walid Zubi, and here is Firas Jaber. We are only two of the main team behind Universal Container Services and Tempo Housing. Um, much in line with the energy and the theme of this conference, we are also aligning ourselves to disrupt the industry. Not destroy it, only to disrupt it. We have a booth outside. We'd like to encourage everybody to pass by and, and to pick up a brochure. Uh, we won't take too much of your time. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to be part of this event. We'd like to con congratulate the uh, event organizers and uh, we're having a very great time here. Firas, you want to say a word before we move? Good morning. We have been in the industry for the past 25 years, and we believe that the industry needs a change. Uh, it, need a, it needs a radical change. Um, the industry, based on the traditional system, it, it, it actually drains the, the, the natural resources and it, it drains your time. And in the age of the digital economy, you have no time. You want it now, right? Isn't it? The, you check your WhatsApp. They want an answer right now. You can't afford to lose time. With this system, you can do it right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jerry, thank you very much. Thank you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's applaud the future through universal container services and structures. You want to visit their boots outside, and ladies and gentlemen, they will blow your mind. They have a whole city built with steel.